God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity just to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for a chance to lift up your name, to study your word, to be enriched by your word. We ask you, Father God, to forgive us for our sins. Don't let our sins, Father God, hinder us from hearing from you. We confess them. We ask you to forgive us. And we thank you, Father God, for forgiving us. We ask you to bless us today as we dive into your word, that your word will speak to us. And we will tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Yes. Trials will come. Yeah, somebody need to hear it tonight. Somebody need to feel like going on. Sometimes you just get to a point that you just don't feel like it. You, you just don't feel like it. You just don't think it's even worth it. But we encourage you tonight to, to stay with the Lord that you can even have a feeling. We know that our faith is not in a feeling, but we also know that every now and then we want to feel like it sometime. Amen. <clears throat> We're in 1 John chapter 3, verses 20 through 24 tonight. 1 John chapter 3, verses 20 through 24 is where we are tonight. 1 John chapter 3, 1 John in the back of the Bible, right before Revelation you will find 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. We're looking at 1st John chapter 3, 
verses 20 through 24. We left on last week realizing that we ought to work out our love. We ought to work out our love. Our love is to be worked out. We ought to work through our love. We ought to have a conviction in the fact that we ought to show our love through our deeds and not just through our words. Amen. We ought to show our our love through our deeds, through our action, what we do, not just what we say. So it's important that we show our love. It's important that others can see our love, can feel our love, experience our love. So the Apostle John picks back up here in verse number 20, and he's still talking about love. He's still talking about the deeds. He's still talking about righteousness. And he ties it in tonight by telling us that we have a heart. Our innermost being, our hearts will appear before God, right? We, as we think, as we feel, as we have great emotions about life, our heart determines what we really, really are inside. It's our heart. It's our heart. We can fake it all day long, but it's our heart. Several men in our great United States of America has gone, have gone from one place to the other and fooled women like they were multimillionaires. And then those women dumped all their money in their care. It's a matter of a heart. They gave their hearts to these guys. They, they believed them. And when you see Instagram and, and in my day it was MySpace and Facebook, when you see all of these things and you look at a person's profile, they can make it look real good. They can make it look real good. Uh, just the other day, um, a brother uh, inboxed me and you know, I still have my mom's picture as my profile on Facebook. I've never been seduced like this in all my days. <laughs> I say I still have my mom's picture on my profile. And, and, and when, I, when I, I post something, he commented on it. Then he began, then he began to talk to me about me being such a lovely lady. Then he began to tell me how he wanted to become my friend on Facebook, but he just couldn't do it. So maybe you can join me in being a friend. So, of course, you look at his profile, see who he is. I don't recognize his face. So I look at who he is. He's a commanding officer. He lives in La Vie. Uh, and he, he's right there where the bombing is going on. Oh, man, he was laying and he was talking about how lovely I was and how, how beautiful I was. And I said, my goodness. And he called me a lovely lady a couple of times and, and let me know how he wanted to meet with me and talk to me. Then he showed pictures of him sitting around the table with all the military people in uniform. And he's the only one at the table in this bright white uniform. I mean, he got all the bells and whistles, but he called the wrong person pretty and lovely. <laughs> he's an intelligent guy. He, he, he's great. He has great accomplishments, but he could not tell that I was a man. I think I'm going to leave that picture up a little while longer. See who, see who else I'm to. <laughs> We begin to talk about lovely lady and how beautiful you are and how I look forward to meeting you. And so what they do is they take senior citizens money, their life savings, and they prey on women who um, who hadn't had attention in a long time. But he just doesn't know if he go by the Davis house, she got some words for him. First thing out of her mouth, I ain't let nobody have anything my husband work hard for. I told my sister, I said, your mama going to get you a daddy. <laughs> she, my sister don't want it and my mama sure ain't got time for it. 
So we have to understand that there will be love that is tossed around. First John chapter three, verse 20, he talks about this love. He talks about first John chapter three, verse 20. He talks about the fact that we ought to demonstrate love. So he picks up in verse 20 and he says, for if our hearts condemn us, if our innermost beings condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and God knows all things. I'm so glad that that God can see things that we don't think he sees. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He sees everything. He works out everything. He says, but if when our hearts condemn us, he's talking about righteousness. He's talking about doing Things from a love perspective. He's talking about showing love through deeds. And he says that if you get to a point in your life where love is not real to you, you can't demonstrate righteousness, your heart will condemn you. That's why it's important for us to know that if we grow up in Sunday school, if we grow up in Bible study, God puts something in us even before he saves us. He's trying to get our attention even before we become born again. God is looking forward to us living a righteous life. And if you've been in classes, the Holy Spirit will condemn you. Your heart will condemn you. The problem I got with people is is. Is the people, there are people who are saved, people who are born again who have no heart. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a big old cry baby. I, I cried a drop. Daddy used to cry. My youngest sister cried. The rest of them sit on the sideline and laugh at us when we start crying. <laughs> One of the biggest things that can make me cry is when a child stands before a group of people and thank his parents or her parents for what they have done. I mean, I just can't hold it. I mean, I mean, that's one of the big, I don't know why, but if you just stand and thank your, just thank your mom and daddy for what they have done, I just can't keep it. I can't hold it. Another thing that, that makes me cry real, real, real strong like is uh, when I'm watching a movie, I'm not talking about those movies that you all watch. I'm talking about watching a movie and it's a successful movie. And as the captions come up at the end, it talks about this person who was a troubled child, went on to accomplish these things, went on to accomplish these things. And then every movie has a climax in it where this child's life turn around. I just can't take it. That's why that's why I watch uh, Undercover Boss. Where where the, the boss visits the job site walks with one or two employees and watch what they do. And then days later, they come and award them for their faithfulness. And when they start crying, guess what? I start crying too. I mean, women who have walked for miles to work and they didn't have a car. And, and the boss says, uh, I, I noticed that you said your parents needed a surgery that you couldn't give them. I'm going to pay all the bills. I'm going to give you $50,000 on those bills. Then one woman said that, that was homeless, but she was coming to work every day. Her children was eating at school and couldn't eat anywhere else because she couldn't afford it. Okay, I don't want you in that apartment. I don't want you in that homeless shelter anymore. I've already put aside $250,000 and you need to just go claim your house. I mean, I'm, I'm just towing up. Sister David come up the stairway and she just shake her head and keep going. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thrown up. I'm just, I messed up. I can't, can't take it. My other movie is Good Doctor. What depicts a young man who's artistic and he's not sure of life, but he can be a great doctor. He can, he can just visualize things that other doctors can't see. But the moment this boy gets into a real life situation, 
he just goes into a panic. He got a girlfriend now. And they, they, they had been trying to live together for months and now he's getting married. And, and so this good doctor is, is on top of the world, but he's going to blow that up too. <laughs> my, other, my other movie is Shark Tank, where, where people walk into the Shark Tank and they want somebody to give them money to support their dreams and, and, and all these habits that they have and, and how they got it and how much money you're making. And in the Shark Tank, if you haven't made money, they won't invest in you. The guy from Ring went into the Shark Tank and all five sharks turned him down. Now everybody got a Ring doorbell. <laughs> because you have to push yourself way through and push yourself. If you have a dream, if you have an aspiration and you tell me about it, don't be surprised. I just start crying. Because we have to understand that we ought to be concerned about other people and love them so much until their vision becomes our vision. Their dreams, their hard work becomes our hard work. Their lives become our lives. We are one working together. So, so John says in verse 20, for if our hearts condemn us, we ought to be condemned in our hearts if we don't show love. We don't walk in righteousness. We don't do what God has commanded us to do. If you have a heart, you're condemned. Even as we were going through our role play on Sunday, another church was getting shot up. Even it was less than one hour difference. When we were preparing to go through our role play in case an active shooter showed up or in case a fire broke out while we were doing our role play in service. A guy was driving hundreds of miles to kill somebody, to kill up a bunch of folk. The, the good thing that stands out about it, the folk in the church fought back. Everybody wasn't scared. We have to get to a point where we love each other enough to fight for each other. Brother Whitlock talked about the fact that we can't let anybody come in our house and tear up our house. Let me tell you, we can't let anybody come in our house and tear up our house. Whether it's our house at home or our house at church, our family members, we have to support each other through love. And if you don't, you ought to be condemned. Your heart condemns you. Your heart condemns you. Your heart. If you can see somebody else's child go hungry, you got a problem. That's right. Now, I'm, <laughs> uh, this comedian called Michael Jr., he talked about, he said, he said, he said, I ain't sending my money to that dog because that dog is an actor. I've seen him act. <laughs> what he was referring to is when they ask you to send money for dogs and cats and pets of all kinds. He, they show the poorest dog walking down the street and they ask you to send them, send them money. Comedian, the, the Christian comedian Michael Jr. says, uh, that dog that's putting on an act, he said, I've seen him act. He said, I'm not supporting that actor. So we have to get to a point where we love people. And there are people who are guilty of loving dogs and pets more than they love human beings. They love them more than they love human beings. They will indict you over an animal and support you and give you a place in Congress and tell you you'll be a good uh, intern if you kill people. We got our values all mixed up. So our hearts will condemn us. But he says, remember this one thing. God is more powerful than your heart and God knows all things. In other words, if you're trying to hide your heart from God, God already knows. It's so interesting to me when I look out at people on Sunday and Wednesday and even with the mask on, their hearts are speaking. Their mannerisms are talking and they believe that they're really hiding it. 
They're not even hiding it from me, so I know they're not hiding it from God. The Bible says that God is such an all-knowing, almighty God until he knows your heart. And because he knows your heart, he's more powerful even than your whole heart. In other words, you ought to turn back to him. God is greater than our hearts. God knows all things. What's the word that says God knows all things? Omniscient. Omniscience. God knows all things. He's omniscient. What's the word that says that God is almighty and all powerful? Omnipotent. 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 He is omnipotent. He is almighty. He is all powerful. What's the word that says God is everywhere at the same time? He is omnipresent. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. What's the word that I made up that says that God sees everything? He's. He's omnivisual. God is omnivisual. He sees everything. I got to see if I can get that in the dictionary. I've already looked for it and see it. There are some places that have their company's name as that, but there's no such word. So I, I get credit for it, right? Go back and do the research. I said it in 2002. He is omnivisual. He, is, uh, he sees everything. What's the word that lets us know that God does what God wants to do when God wants to do it, the way God wants to do it? God is sovereign. Let me tell you, we serve the amazing God. We serve the awesome God. There is no God like our God. Let me tell you, there is no God like our God. David says, to Goliath, I don't come with, with, with knives and guns. I don't come. I come in the name of the Lord our God. I come in the name of God. This awesome God. The God of Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I come in the name of this God. And guess what happened? Little bitty boy slingshot and, and some pebbles took down a giant and then he cut his neck off. The snake is not dead until you cut his neck off. You ever hit a snake and, you know, I, I don't mind taking a snake out. They can, they can arrest me if you want to. Uh, I don't mind taking the snake out. If I see a snake, it's on. He doesn't have to be bothering me. I go to him. The fight is on. But he's not dead until you cut his head off. You got to disconnect his head from his body. God says... He will bruise the man's heel, but the man will crush his head. That man was Jesus. The snake bruised our heel, but you got to crush his head. God is powerful. God is almighty. God is sovereign. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent, uh, omnipotent. God is awesome. Another word that we just kind of throw around like we throw around love, we throw around the word awesome. That's that's the millennium way of saying good things about you. Now, oh, you're awesome. Oh, you're so awesome. There's only one awesome. He is God. No one compares to him. He is God. John says that God is greater than our heart. In other words, what we feel, what we think, what our mind take us to, God is greater. And all you have to do is turn back to God. First John chapter one says that all you have to do is confess your sin and God is faithful and God is just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He is God. He's greater. There's none like him. Not only is he greater, he's the greatest. There's a soul food restaurant in Missouri City that says greatest barbecue. The greatest barbecue. 
the greatest barbecue. Muhammad Ali says, I am the greatest. Layla Ali now says, she's the greatest. Everybody want to be great, but there's only one who's really great. It is our God. There's none like him. He is our God. So your, your, your little personality, your little state of being, your little heart, your little mindset doesn't deter God. John says he's greater. He's greater than our heart. He's greater than our mindset. He is the great God. Verse 21. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us. First of all, he said, if our heart condemns us. Now he says, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. What he's saying in the original Greek text is that because we have confidence in our God, our heart does not condemn us. So he says, if beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And because we have confidence in God, our heart does not condemn us. Isn't that something? He's moving. He's he's transitioning. He's he's going from one point to the other. We have confidence in God. And because we have confidence in God, our hearts become pure. Our hearts become righteous. Our hearts become godly. When we have confidence in God, look at what it says. Verse 21, beloved or beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. Our confidence ought to be in God. How many people woke themselves up this morning? Raise your hand real high. Raise both of them. <laughs> our confidence every morning, every night, all during the day ought to be in God. Regardless of your degree, your hope ought to be in God. Regardless of where you graduated, regardless of how smart you are, your hope ought to be in God. I have confidence in God. People would tell you crazy stuff like, why don't you just have faith? No, you telling me to do something and then you want to spiritualize it and tell me to have faith. Have faith in you. Now, you come up with this quandra of stuff. You you come up with stuff for me to do. And I tell you, I can't do that. And you're going to tell me to have faith. God didn't tell me to get up there. I remember we were painting this 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 50 foot cross out here. A young man was up there with me and we were just rolling and painting. The wind got high. He said, Pastor, I think we ought to get down. I said, man, let's just go and knock it out. Pastor, this thing is blowing. I said, look, just park the bucket next to the cross. And when the wind blow it, just blow it into the cross. It ain't no big problem. It ain't no big deal. Just, let's just go and get this over with. And then when I got home, the news reporter said the winds got up to 40 miles an hour that day. I never told him to have faith. Because I was operating in foolishness. Are you with me? Now, all of y'all calling me a fool now. What would it look like if I told him, just have faith? God didn't tell us to get up there and 40, degree, 40 miles an hour wind. We have faith in God when God uh, tells us what to do and we obey him. People would tell you all the time, have faith. Don't get caught up in that. They bullying you. <laughs> we, this guy driving 100 miles an hour. I'm riding in the car with him. Man, look, let me out. Oh, man, just have faith. Have faith in you in this car? <laughs> you have faith in God when you're obeying him, when you're doing what, what he has anointed you to do, what he has appointed you to do. Missionaries all over this world survive in foreign countries because they have been called to be missionaries. The problem is some of us have been called to be missionaries and we are not going. 
God protects them. God keeps them. And then they go with the mindset that if I die, then I become a martyr for God. Let me tell you, have faith in God when you're doing what God has called you to do. When you're not doing what because every good thing is not a God thing. I think I said it again. Every good thing is not a God thing. It would be good for Sister Davis buy me roses, but that ain't God thing. Are you with me? Some women don't even want roses. She, they think it's a waste of money, waste of time. And some people say they die. And other women said, try me and see. I'll let you know. So we have to walk in faith with God when we're obeying him, when we're obedient. And that's what the next verse, the next few verses talk about. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Let's unpack this. He's come from verse number one in first John chapter three. All the way up to verse number 22. He's painted a picture all the way. He said to us that that our, that our hearts show love through our deeds, not through our words, not through our talk, not through our speech. A lot of people think that they can talk their way through. That they can make it happen just by talking. One woman told me I make my money with my mouth. What well, she's saying is she can talk her way into anything and out of anything. John says we don't talk our way through life. We do deeds through our life. James would say the apostle James would say that faith without works is dead. That, that, that's not even alive. You have to work out your salvation. You have to work through your salvation. Yeah, you're saved. Yeah, you're born again. Yeah, you're going to heaven anyway. But there are rewards that you can receive if you walk in faith. There are rewards that you can receive by keeping his commandments. Verse 22 says, and what and whatever we ask, we receive from him. But that comes with conditions, right? Whatever we ask, we receive of him. Let's look at what he says. Because we keep his commandments. Whatever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments. Look at the next portion. It says, and those things that are pleasing in his sight. How do we please God? We don't please him through action. We, we please him through faith. And the reason why we do righteous deeds is because we're walking in faith. We just believe that God will do what God said he would do. Don't get caught up on things that God says he's going to do and don't do it and just shout anyway. The, the late Pastor Manson Johnson would say it like this. God is not only waiting on some hallelujah, he's waiting on some dooley -luya. He wants you to do it. Faith without works is dead. So what you ask of him. James says we ask, we pray, but we ask and we pray a mist. Meaning we ask and we pray with the wrong motives. How will this benefit God? Oh, I know how it benefits you. But how would it benefit God? How would God get the glory? An expensive gift. How would God get the glory? We ought not be torn up and tattered everywhere we go. In my day, we were embarrassed to wear patches on our knees. You, you, there was a symbol of you being poor, but guess what? We wore patches on our knees because we were poor. And now... They don't wear patches on their knees. They go to the store and buy, buy clothes that's ripped all up. The knees are out. The thighs are out. I said, well, you probably should have just worn some shorts today. Life has changed. People hang, hang, hang uh, 
clothes on the line and shoot them with BB guns so they can have holes throughout them. <laughs> then they get a knife and rip them up some more. I said, brother, where are the rest of your clothes? Well, I bought them like this. I said, how much you, you know, I'm always want to know now, how did you waste God's resources? <laughs> you paid same thing I paid and I got a full set and you didn't. <laughs> so we have to understand that God wants us to do things that gives him glory. God wants us to share things that give him glory. God wants us to obey him, walk in his commandments, do what he says. As we keep his commandment, he rewards us. Well, why? Why hadn't God given me what I asked? Is it that, you know, we have to examine ourselves. Is it that I asked for the wrong motives? Is it that we need to walk in faith and still trust him? You know, some people say that you. You should bring it before the altar, pray one time and leave it there. I don't su subscribe to that. My thing is keep praying to something happen. Keep praying to God says yes. Keep praying to God says no. And even when he says no, keep praying. Let me tell you something. The angels in heaven ought to get busy when you pray. They ought to know when you pray, you're not going to give up. You're going to keep asking God. Keep bombarding heaven. Keep listening for God to answer. We all can give up. We all can quit. I let God determine when he says no. <laughs> but I'm going to let God know this is what I want, Lord. This is when I want it, Lord. This is how I want it, Lord. We pray specifically. Just keep praying. Watch what God does. Watch righteously, live righteously, stand righteously and watch what God does. Keep praying. He says, and whatever you ask, we will, whatever we ask, we will receive from him. you got to know that God is the giver. Everything that's good, everything that's worth having has to come from God. That's why the old folks said, I don't want that dirty money in my house. <laughs> Even Steve Harvey had sense enough to tell a woman that. She's standing and she's saying, you know, you know, Steve, I used to be married. I got a divorce and now I got I got three dudes on the line. I got one dude that's a good handyman. He cuts the yard. He fixed everything. I got I got another dude that he just gives me money. And I got this third dude. He's just so sweet. And after Steve started peeling back the layers, she said, well, he he has a he has a, a, a traveling business. He has an import export business. <laughs> and Steve says he's either going to get killed or he's going to jail. I said he she he said he's getting ready to go to jail. So we have to understand as we walk according to God's commandments, God is able to bless us. I would much rather take my chances trusting God to bless me than to trust that God is not going to bless me. I would much rather just just trust that, that God is going to do it. than to take matters in my own hand and destroy it myself. How many people have destroyed some stuff in their lives? I, I need to hold up both my hands and all my toes. I've just messed up some stuff because I didn't consult God. I just tore up some stuff because I didn't wait on God. I just messed up some relationships, some friendships because I said the wrong thing in the wedding of God. Because I acted the wrong way. The text declares that God knows everything. The text declares that if your heart condemns you, God is still greater. In other words, turn back to God. We ought to be telling God, God, forgive me. I messed up again. And then when you mess up the same way, said, Lord, I messed up again the same way. Because some people are not outwardly messing up. They're inwardly messing up. What am I saying? 
They're, they're not outwardly messing up, they're inwardly messing up. What am I saying? The inside. Their hearts are not pure. They can fake it. And then those who work that give to people and do things for people and then they walk out and say, this is what I've done. Wrong motive. The Bible teaches don't brag on yourself. Let other folk brag on you. Amen. Operate with the right motives and says, do what is pleasing to the God, the God we serve. And that is walk in faith. Do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. Verse 23. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of the son, Jesus Christ. And love one another as he gave us commandment. If you're going to be blessed. If your prayer is going to be answered, you got to begin with his son, Jesus Christ. One of the worst things a pastor can do is put someone in leadership that he is not assured that they are born again. You can't expect unborn people to do born again things. Paul says to the Corinthian church, you cannot expect a natural man to act spiritual. He has to be born again. He must be born again. That's why every time I present, you see at the end of my message, I, I give an appeal because folk can fake it. A preacher preached for 35 years and in, in one of his sermons, he got saved. We can fake this thing. We can, we can grow up in church and we know just what to do, when to do it and how to do it. We can just fake it and have no anointing, have no no presence of mind, have no presence of God. And we can just do it. We know how to do it, when to do it. We know when to keep quiet. We can just do it. But we have to keep his commandments. He has commanded us that we should believe upon his son, Jesus the Christ. We must believe on the name of Jesus. There is power in his name. When your car starts spinning in the rain, do you cuss it back in line or you pray it back in line? Or do you have time? Just say Jesus. Trust him. Jesus. Jesus. When you don't have time to say, Lord, here I am buying once again toward the mother's dust with my head turned toward the ground and my mind looking up in heaven. It's in the name of Jesus. I call on you again. Lord, bless. Now, most of the time I don't have time for that. Most of the time, only thing I can get out is Jesus. Because there's power in his name. When, when Peter starts sinking, he didn't go into a great oration. He said, Lord, save me. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is no other name by which men should be saved other than the name of Jesus. There's no other delivering power. The devil has power, but he doesn't have all power. It's the name of Jesus that we rely on. It's Jesus name. He says the name Jesus, Jesus Christ. Word Christ is the anointed one, the Messiah, the one who came and has delivered us. Rescued us from the devil. His name is Jesus. He says, call on that name. When you pray, call on that name. So he says, live righteous. He says, live in love. He says, show love. He says, whatever you do, get your mind set back in order and get your motive in order. He says, continue to pray. Paul says, pray without ceasing. And when you pray, you need to call and believe on the name of the Son of God. His name is Jesus Christ. A lot of Jesus is out there. There are a lot of Jesus out there, but there's only one Jesus Christ. Call on the name Jesus Christ. Then he, he says in verse 23, 
love one another as he gave us commandment. They will know you by your love one to the other. They will know you. They don't know your heart, but they will know you by your deeds as as you show love one to the other. You have to show people love. Don't fake it. I need to get that across. People know when you fake it. People know when you're faking it. People know when you're trying to fool them. And most of all, God knows. And whenever God knows, God deals with us. It says, love one another as God has given, Jesus has given this command to us. Final verse, verse number four. 24, 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. Now he who keeps the commandments abides in him and he in him. What is he saying? Abides in him. Then he says, and he in him. What is he talking about? Abides in him and he in him. What is he saying? Uh, he abides, he abides in God. OK, so you abide in Christ, you abide in Jesus. Then guess what? Jesus abides in you. John chapter 15. Yeah, John chapter 15 talks about Jesus is the is the vine. We are the branches and God is the vine dresser or the husband man. And as we abide in Jesus, Jesus abides in us. This word abide means to stand, to dwell, to walk in to hold on to, to maintain, to stand fast. Jesus abides in me. I have to abide in him. Ask what you will and I will give it to you. How many people have ever gone through that period where they said, now Lord, I've been asking you and you said, ask what I will. I've been asking you, Lord. Anybody? We all have, right? We go through it. Lord, I, I've been asking you. So we begin to examine ourselves. And as we, we examine ourselves, we come to a conclusion. Lord, I've, I've checked this box, this box and this box. So where's our faith? We got to make sure that it lines up with what God is saying. We got to make sure it glorify God. We have to make sure that we have the right motive. We have to make sure that we work for it. One of the worst things you can do is give your child everything they ask for. Let me tell you, that's bad. I mean, the problem was solved for, for us growing up and the problem solved for my daughter, too. You know how the problem was solved? My folk didn't have that much to give. Some of you never received an orange, an apple, and a peppermint stick for, for Christmas. I mean, <laughs> and I ain't talking about this, that, in that. I'm talking about one, one dry bag. I know this sounds like a fairy tale to most of you city folk, but I'm talking about this is your Christmas gift. And it wasn't even wrapped. It was in a bag. When we got our first bicycle, everybody on the plantation, the parents had talked. Everybody on the plantation got a bike same year. We thought we were rich. We had bicycles. Little 20 inches. We had bicycles. For Christmas and all, everybody on the plantation got one. And there was some dust going on. There was some gravel going on. So, so we have to understand that God is blessing us in spite of us. Some of us can get stuff done that we've never gotten done before. We can afford it now. Most of us at 50 have made more money than our parents made the, the entire period of their lives. That's right. That's right. And they never lost a house, mm -hmm. never lost a car. And they got the same phone number. Mm -hmm. Mama has the same phone number she had 50 years ago. Right. Yeah. Most of us don't even remember our phone number when we first got phones. <laughs> and, and young people, Young people change phone numbers every three months. You know what? There are certain people in my phone, certain members of the New Beginning Church. I have their name and then I have beside their name the date. 
that date represent when they gave me the new phone number. And if I look in that person's thing, I got about six dates. New phone number. What are we doing? We, we have to make sure we make we make well with what God blesses us with. Now, he who keeps his commandments abide in him and he in him. And by this, by what? By this. We know that he abides in us by what I love by the spirit whom he has given us. The point is, Jesus is no longer rocking around on planet Earth. He's not here. There are some who believe that he's yet to come. He has already come. And since Jesus has left, he left us with the comforter. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He has left us. He has left him here. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He, not it. Jesus says I will. I have to leave you now, John 14. But I, the, the Holy Spirit is coming. The paraclete, para helper, the paraclete, the one who walks beside us, who teaches us. The, the helper is coming. The one who encourages us. The helper is coming. The one who builds us up. The helper is coming. We waiting on some motivational speaker to build us up. He, the Holy Spirit. God says he makes moaning and groanings that we don't even know of. The Bible teaches in first Corinthians, second Corinthians, chapter five. It says the body is groaning to get out of here, to put on a brand new house. A brand. We walk around in a tent. Jesus want us in a house. Matter of fact, Jesus says there's a mansion. And when they talk about a mansion in the New Testament, they're talking about a, a house that that has plenty of room. And God is there. So we go, we're not going just to our house. We're going to God's house. He has created a mansion for us. That's why the senior saints used to say, I'm sending up timber. What are they talking about? I'm sending up timber. Now, they didn't say I'm sending up bricks. Not stone, not stubble. They say I'm sending up timber. It's because they can only relate to the wooden house frame house we were in. And because they can only relate to the wooden frame house, they always talked about sending up timber, meaning that they're building their mansion plank by plank, pieces of wood by piece of wood. They didn't even talk about carpet on the floor because they didn't have any. It says sometime my floor was bare. We could walk in a room and look down and see what's under the ground. I know I'm talking Greek to some of y'all. I mean, some of y'all just can't identify. Let me tell you, I am blessed. Folks say they blessed and highly favored. Let me tell you something. I'm blessed. In, in the wintertime, you can feel the breeze. In the summertime, you can feel the heat. God has been good to us. Why don't we be good to him? Why don't we trust him? Be righteous toward him? Obey his commandments, love one another so we can draw people to Christ. Our ultimate goal for salvation is that other people will see the life, the lives we live and they come to know Jesus because of us. Can people come to know Jesus because of you? Or are you quiet when the subject comes up? Can they come to know Jesus because of your lifestyle or is your lifestyle torn up? Can they come to know Jesus because of how you handle life? Are you getting a, a tizzy every time something happens? Men are looking. The waiting world is looking for us to represent Christ in all that we do. So he says, live righteous. He says uh, the Holy Spirit abides in us. And since God abides in us, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit really abides. He really lives. He has resident in us. When we're saved, when we're born again, when we confess Christ as our Savior. The door of the church is open.
Imitations extended. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, this Jesus, who don't know that you're born again, don't know that you're saved. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. The Jesus that he talks about in 1 John chapter 3, the son of God who died on a skull hill called Calvary, who died on the cross that they laid in a borrowed tomb, but early that third day morning he rose from the dead. The same Jesus that that gave his life for us and got up early that third day morning wants to be your Lord and your Savior. If you've never confessed Christ as your Savior, just bow your head and join in with me and invite him into your life. Just repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you're now born again, that you're on your way to heaven. And regardless of what happens at this point, you're on your way to heaven. You will be there with the Lord. There may be others who struggle with this righteous life. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Father God, we thank you now for saving our souls. Lord, we ask you to forgive us, to bless us, walk with us. Bless our lives, Father God, that our lives will, will be set free, that our lives will be lives that will represent you well. Bless us, Lord, that we would turn it all over to you and trust you. Bless us to walk in faith. And Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, to show yourself, to see you. Show yourself and manifest yourself to us. Lord, bless our prayers. Lord, answer our prayers, yes. Lord, give us strength to hold on. And bless us, Lord, that we will walk with you as you abide in us and we abide in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus Christ is the center of attention and the main attraction. If you want to join our church, just inbox us and let us know. We'll be glad to welcome you. If you've received Christ or rededicated your life tonight, please, ma'am, please, sir, inbox us and let us know. We'll be glad to rejoice with you and welcome you to this family of faith. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. This is a moment that we can give to the Lord and we can give to him not grudgingly nor out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving to Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zell is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can do so by mailing it to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Yes, Jesus loves He loves me. Jesus loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Somebody 
Yeah, Lord. He loves me. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for these gifts. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand and be dismissed. He loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Father God, we thank you now, Lord, for this, your word. We thank you, Father, that we are walking in righteousness. We thank you, Lord, that you are able to abide in us and we are abiding in you. We ask you, Father God, to strengthen our faith in you. Bless us to please you by way of our faith. And we pray for somebody, Father God, even right now, who wants to give up. We ask you to bless them to hold on. Bless them to stand fast. Bless them to walk in faith with you. And we ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with them. We pray for those who were victims. We pray for those, Father God, who are suffering from the loss of loved ones. We pray, Father God, for those who are ailing. We ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. We ask you to bless our church, that our church will continue to be what you would have it to be, winning souls from men to Jesus Christ. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.